So, Vivan, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the minimization of the DFA. Uh, concept of the minimization can be understood by taking an example. Let's say that we have to draw a DFA for a language wherein the language strings contains only the 0 and the 1 characters or 0 and 1 alphabets and the length of the string mod 2 is equals to 0. It means we have the even length strings. So that means uh, an epsilon means the zero length string will be acceptable. Any two length string will be acceptable like this. And then any four length string will be acceptable like this and so on and so forth. So let's draw a DFA that uh, can be drawn for this. So let's say I start with A and let us say that the A is the start state because the epsilon will have to be accepted. After this, let's say if I take a 0 or the 1, I move to the state B, which is the uh, non-final state. If I get another 0 or the 1, let's move to the final state. If I get another 0 or the 1, let's say I move to another state, which is a non-final state. And then if I get a 0 and 1, I will reach to the state number C, which is a final state. So if you see, uh, Simply that this is a zero length string acceptable, one length string rejected, two length string accepted, three length string rejected, four length string accepted, five length string rejected, six length string accepted, seven length string rejected, and so on and so forth. It means that all the even length strings can be accepted with this automata. Now, if I draw another automata, so uh, I'll start with the A as a final state. If I get a zero or the one, I will reach to, let's say the state B. If I get another zero or the one, let's say I reach to the state C, which is a final state, let's say. And if I get another zero or the one, I'll reach to B state. So in this, you can see that zero length string is accepted. One length string is rejected. Two length string is accepted. Three length string is, string is rejected, 4 length string is accepted, 5 length string is rejected, 6 length string is accepted and so on and so forth. It means that it is accepting all the strings of length 2. I can also form a DFA in a different manner. Let's say the A is the start state. If you get a 0 or the 1, you reach to the B which is a final state. And if you get a 0 or the 1, you reach to the A state, which is a final state. So zero length string is accepted. One is one length string is rejected. Two length string is accepted and three length string is rejected. Four length string is accepted and five length string is rejected and so on and so forth. It means that the first automata is doing the same thing what the second is doing and the third is also doing the same thing. In the first automata, I have four states. In the second automata, I have three states. In the third automata, I have two states. Out of which, the two state automata will be said as the minimal DFA because it is having least number of the states among the three which is mentioned here. Now the minimization of the DFA uh, means uh, we have to, we have been given a DFA and uh, if you want to reduce the number of the states then certain steps will need to be performed in order to reduce the number of the steps. And obviously, if you have an automata of uh, four states, that will be less efficient than the automata which is having three states. And similarly, if a, state, if a DFA has two states, that will be more efficient than the automata having three or the four states. So we have a task of uh, reducing the number of, this, number of the states. And this is possible by combining some of the states. For example, if we have, let's say, four states, and uh, if I have to reduce this four, four state automata to the two state automata, let's say X and the Y are the two state automata. In that case, some of the states of uh, the four state automata will have to be combined together to form the two state automata. So this is uh, the concept of the minimization of the DFA. And uh, minimization of the DFA is required to obtain the minimal version of any DFA which consists of the minimum number of the states possible. Now, 
the concept of the minimization can be done like this. Let's say we are doing the transition of A with a string X. And let's say this leads to the final state. And I'm doing the transition of the state B with a symbol X or with a string X and which leads to F. In that case, A and B will be said to be the equivalent states. Similarly, if I'm doing the transition of A with a symbol X, and if I'm doing the transition of symbol uh, state B with a symbol X, and this these two lead to the non-final states, let's say, or we, what we say that this is not leading to the final states, then also I'll say that the A and the B are the equivalent states. So what can be the types of the equivalences? So the type of the equivalences may be that uh, if mod x is zero, it means the length of the string is zero, then A and B are said to be zero equivalent. And if the length of the string is x, length of x is uh, one, then we will say that the A and the B are one equivalent. And if the length of the string is two, I'll say that A and B are two equivalent. And similarly, if mod x is equals to n, I'll say that the A and the B are an equivalent. So I will have to find out 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth equivalence in order to get assured of that uh, which of the two states can be combined together or which of the three states can be combined together. Because the minimization concepts means that we will have to reduce the number of the steps and it is possible only by combining some of the states. So let's take an example and then try to understand how does this equivalence go and how can we minimize the number of the, the states. So let's take a simple automata wherein we have five states A, B, C, D and E where E is the final state. These are the transitions. A is the start state. So on zero, I go to B. On one, I go to C. And then here it is one. Here it is one. This transition is one. This transition is one. This transition is zero. This transition is zero. Means from D on zero, you're going to be. And uh, there are two more transitions. From C with zero, you go to B. And on E on zero, you go to B. So what will be the transition table for this? Because everything will be dependent on the transition table. That's why the transition table is very important. So A, B, C, D, E are the states. And on zero, on A, you go to B, you go to C on one. Similarly, we can draw the transition table. You can verify it with the transition edges in the DFA. Here the e, here e is the final state. So now uh, I will have to work on this transition table only. So I'll first find out the zero equivalence. So zero equivalence means the string length is zero. So you just segregate the final and the non-final states same. So A, B, C, D are the non-final states and E is the final state here. So this is the only thing that you have to do in the case of the zero equivalence. Now we'll find out the one equivalence. So for finding the one equivalence, uh, the elements which are there in A, B, C, D set, I just need to be assured of that whether they belong, whether they all belong to the same set or they belong to the different set by taking an input symbol of length one. So I'm only checking for a b here and then the rest of the things will be checked later so a b so how i am going to check this if a and b are the one equivalent or not so let's take a zero on a and let's take a zero on b let's see where do they go so a on zero go to b and b on zero go to b 
So obviously they are going to the same set. B and B belong to the same set. Similarly, A on one go to C and B on one go to D. So they two C and D are also in the same set. So that's why I will say that A and B are one equivalent. Similarly, for finding out the relation between A and C, whether A and C are one equivalent or not. So for that, let's write the transitions of A and C first on zero and then transitions of A and C on one. So we can see that A on zero go to B and C on zero go to C. Similarly, A on one go to, sorry, A on C on one, C on zero also goes to B. So A on one go to C and C on one also go to C. So you can see that B and B belong to the same set and C and C also belong to the same set. And so I'll say that the A and C are one equivalent. Then I'm finding out this with AD, whether AD are one equivalent or not. So for this, I will have to mention the transitions of A and D first with the zero symbol and then with the one symbol. Now A on zero go to B and D on zero go to B. So both of them are going in the same set. Similarly, A on one go to C, but D on one go to E. C belongs to this set, but E belongs to the different set. Hence, I'll say that A and D are not one equivalent. So if A and D are not one equivalent and AB and AC are one equivalent, it means that ABC belong to the same set, but D belongs to the different set. Hope it makes sense because AB are one equivalent. It means AB belong to the same set. If AC are one equivalent, it means A and C are in the same set. Since AB are in the one set and AC are in the one set, it means that ABC are in the same, same set. But D is separate now. D is not one equivalent with A. It means that D is not equivalent with B. And it means that D is not equivalent with C. Hence, I am taking D out in the reference set. So this is the outcome of one equivalent. This is the outcome of one equivalence. Now, once I have done the uh, one equivalence, I will go for the two equivalence. So the, for the two equivalence, I will take the set of one equivalence as a base. Fine. So D and E are already uh, the single element set. So no worry about that. But the worry is about the ABC. So I'll first check the two equivalents of A and B. So I'm going to check the two equivalents of A and B. So let's see that A moves to B on getting zero. B moves to B on getting zero. So it looks like they belong to the same set, but we will have to verify for one also. So B A on one goes to C, but B on one go to D. You can see that C is in the different set and D is in the different set. Hence, I'll say that A and B are not one equivalent. Now, if A and B are not one equivalent, let's check about A and C. What about A and C? So A on zero goes to B and C on zero goes to B. A on one goes to C and C on one goes to C. It means that they belong to the same set. So A and, sorry, it is two equivalent. So A and C are two equivalent. So now I've got the result like this, that AB are not the same set, are not in the same set, but AC are in the same set. So AC are in the same set. D has been segregated out. D is already segregated and E is already segregated. So this is the outcome of two equivalents. Now after this, I'll check for the three equivalents. So three equivalents. For three equivalents, I just have to check about the A and C, whether they belong to the same set or not. So for A and C, A and C. This goes to B, 
on zero and C also goes to B on zero. A goes to C on one and C also goes to C on one. So B and B belong to the same set, hence looks like they are three equivalent. A goes to C and B or C also goes to C and C is a separate set. So you can, uh, sorry, C, C, C belongs to the set AC. So since on zero, they are going to one set. On one, they are going to the same set. Hence, I'll say that AC are three equivalent. <clears throat> so the outcome of the two equivalent was AC, B, D, and E. And the outcome for three equivalence is also the same. So if this is so, we will not go for the four equivalence and will declare that the equivalence have got completed here. And we have achieved the DFA state minimization. <clears throat> so A and C states will have to be combined. So I'm combining A C state and rest of the states will remain same. So wherever there is a C state, just delete that and change it to A C state. So I'm changing the transition table like this. So B and A C. So this is the transition table, the new transition table. So here I have eliminated the state C. And wherever C's were there, I am changing that to AC. Wherever C's are there, I am changing that to AC. So that is what the changes have been made. And you can draw the DFA for the sake of understanding. And if you are attempting this question in your university exams, so you don't only really have to write, draw the transition table, but you will have to draw the state, uh, state transition diagram also. So AC on zero goes to B. AC on one goes to one. <clears throat> B on zero goes to itself. B on one go to goes to state number D. And then D goes to B by getting zero. D goes to E on getting one and E is the final state. E on getting zero goes to state number B and E on getting one go to state number AC. So this is the state transition diagram. It means this is the minimized DFA. So I hope this makes sense and we will discuss more examples in the next lecture. Thanks for watching this.